this uh, video we're going to show you how to install Plogue and some of the things in the file system you're going to want to know. In this particular one will be on uh, Windows 7 64-bit. Uh, we'll also show you some of the settings that you're going to want in Plogue before we actually load the spec layout and start doing conversions. Okay, so this is the Surround by Us website, of course, and at the time of this video, this is the, the current version of spec, and the first thing it tells you to do is go get the latest version of, of Plogue. And you'll notice here that it says you want the 32-bit the, uh, standalone version of Plogue, e even if you're running a 64-bit operating system. Okay, that's very important. So here's the link here that takes you to where the uh, latest version always is and so here again even though I'm on Windows uh, 7 64-bit you can see here that I'm gonna take the Windows 32-bit uh, standalone version so that's this one right here so we'll save that I've already got it installed so I'm gonna stick skip the actual uh, install step there but I want to show you some things in the file system. Okay, so I've got C drive is where Windows is located on my computer and because this is a 64-bit operating system you have two different uh, program files folders. So you have program files without any suffix and that will be where 64-bit programs will go and then you have program files x86 and that is where 32-bit programs go. So again, since we got the 32-bit version of, of uh, Plogue, it's going to be in here. So here it is. Okay, and so I have a bunch of stuff in here because I've been using it, but you'll, you'll have less things. But what I want to point out in here is the Layouts folder is where your, your layouts go, obviously and those are the different layouts that you that you use within plug so spec the spec layout will go in that folder initially you won't have a plugins folder the installer for spec will create one for you but if not you you have to manually create it and inside the plugin folders are where these uh, DLL files go and uh, you're only going to have the current version of spec, uh, I, this is an experimental version here, but the current version is uh, spec 4.2.dll. So you'll have that in there, and uh, that's that's pretty much it as far as plugins. Not to be confused with uh, VSTs, which are in the VST plugins folder, and those are also uh, DLL files. Here's some individual DLLs that I have that are VSTs. Okay, so again, you've got layouts, plugins, VST plugins, and uh, also groups. Groups are a little tricky because by default there's ones that are stored here, but when you tend to save things from within, groups from within Plogue, they go to a different place, which I'll show you in a minute here. So let's look at that. So I'm going to go back up here to the C drive again. And now I'm going to go into Users, and again this is a this is Windows 7, uh, so this is my username. Then I'm going to go into App Data. Now this is a hidden folder, so if you haven't set up your folder options to show hidden files and folders, you won't see this. So that's a handy thing to do. Then we go into App Data and Roaming. Okay, and then here you see a bunch of these are you know preferences and stuff for various programs. So here's Plug, Bidul. So here's this group folder that I told you about. If you're if you're saving groups from within Plug, it will default to this uh, directory. And so it's good to know where that is if you're ever trying to upload them or something. Uh, also, this is where your your license goes. When you buy a license for Plug, it looks something like this, and and uh, the program will ask for it and it will put it here automatically but it's kinda good to know where all these things are 
And the, the main reason that I wanted to show you this directory in Windows 7 is this is where the the log biddle log file is. And there's generally two of them. So the biddle.log is the um, the most recent one and it's a text file full of all this stuff. And you know, if we have a, a problem and plug is crashing or there's a problem with spec or something, you know, I'm gonna be wanting to see the log file, or if you're posting on plug.com with a problem, uh, they're going to want you to mail them the log file. So that's where that is, and then uh, this biddle underscore zero dot log is then the previous run of, of plug, right? So current run, previous run. And uh, that's pretty much it for stuff in the file system. Let's go ahead and start plug I'll show you some settings that we want to do now I'm gonna get a error here because uh, this uh, screencast software forces things into a different sample rate so you won't see that when you start plug so let's uh, this is plug and we'll talk about what all this means in a, in a bit here but the first thing to do really is to is to set some preferences so on the edit menu you select preferences and you're going to want floating frames. This is on the user interface tab, floating frames. The rest of it should pretty much be like I, like I have it here. And you can experiment later, but this is a good default setting. Uh, VSTs is important. I've noticed on new installations this tends to default to the program file Steinberg, VST, whatever. So you want to make sure that you're, you've got this um, set to the VST folder in uh, plug that I showed you earlier in your program files, plug, biddle, uh, VST plugins. Uh, you know, unless you've got a bunch of uh, digital audio workstation software and you've already got VST somewhere and you're going to keep them all somewhere else, that's fine. But I just want you to know where the VSTs are that, that plug is pointing to. So we use we use this as the default okay and we don't care about rewire right now uh, disk IO is an important one use WAV format extensible you want to set that to never because if you don't do that what happens is you'll get all done with the conversion and you've got your six mono files and you'll go to put them in uh, sir code to encode them and it'll say I don't understand these files and that's something that often gets forgotten when you load a new version of Plog or something to check that setting. Okay, DSP. Obviously, for CDs, you're going to want you know 44.1 to 48 for uh, DVDs and on from there. So that you'll be changing on occasion depending on what uh, what you're producing for. Buffer size. Now, in what we're doing in conversion is we're not performing live, so we don't care about latency. And what we want to do is minimize the loading of the CPU uh, so that we're sure that we don't have any, any glitches. So rather than a lot of times you, in audio programs, you're trying to pick the lowest uh, buffer size you can get away with because you're, you're doing something live or in real time. In our case, we're, we're, we're going to pick the largest buffer size to get the minimum CPU loading. Now, FFT size you can play with depending on what your, uh, how fast your computer is. Uh, you know, more is better in terms of quality. Uh, same thing with FFT overlap. These are the settings I tend to use by default. And uh, FFT overlap uh, has the largest impact on the, on the load in spec and also it, it can really impact the quality if you go too low. So certainly you'd never go below four. And uh, again, these are the defaults that I use. Uh, higher precision FFT setting. And uh, that's, that's it for the, uh, for the preferences.